We want to talk about the words that President Clinton shared at a speech I heard him convey in 2003, which really resonated with me that I think in a lot of ways can resonate in how to move, move forward. Shared values, shared responsibilities, shared benefits. You know, if, if you want to be able to sustain a movement, you can't do it alone. It is impossible to have success individually. Uh, when you think about all the different aspects that happen with a team, you know, for, for any of you that are uh, watching the playoffs and my, my love for the resistance school means that I'm missing the Rangers game tonight. You know, it's really difficult for me. You know, brothers do like hockey. I'm just trying to let you know that right now. Right. You know, so you understand that it, it's tough to, to engage. But the only way to be successful in competition and in life is having multiple parts of that. And so when we think about how do I want to have success? I need to figure out what's first our shared value. Before I even get to the tactic, before I even get to the, the, the process, what is uniting us for a deeper cause? You know, if you look at, you know, uh, John Delavope, who's at your IOP Institute of Politics and the polling that they've been doing recently, uh, some of the recent polling they talked about is that people want to be united, but there's a lot of conversation around economic justice and economic unity that happens there. People want to feel that connection. But if you want to sustain a movement, then you have to have a conversation of what are our shared responsibilities that we have to have. And you can't just say, well, you know what, I'm just going to show up for the march and be ready to march. Well, you know, what were you doing before that happened? How were you engaging throughout? You know, when you think about people didn't just were able to show up for the women's march. And when you see uh, the pipe and the gates that were there, who was making the phone calls to the police department? <laughs> Who was mapping out the route? Who was making sure that there was food and water along the way? What were we thinking about? And when you think about one of the reasons why the Women's March was so successful is they weren't just thinking about one day. It was, what are we doing for the first 100 days? And what are our 10 steps and 10 actions that are going along that way? And we're going to dive into that uh, a little bit. And then the shared benefits. If you're able to have the conversation of how do we have this understanding, that's how you're able to take the resistance to the next level. And when you think about some of the, the recent examples itself, we can talk this through. So the Women's March, which we talked about uh, uh, briefly, when you think about how of the, the time 100, four of uh, the organizers of the Women's March were recognized in that. Why? Because people understood that we had to check our egos at the door. And we had to figure out what are going to be our respective lanes with that. You know, we had some conversations um, um, with Tamika Mallory recently, a very dear friend of mine who was a part of the Women's March. And we asked her, how many groups were a part of the Women's March? that you saw that was happening. And she said there was more than 400 participating organizations. Right? The level of coordination and detail and selflessness that has to happen to be successful in order to do that. So then we asked, well, well how were you able to be successful? And, and the conversation was, well, we built a clear theme uh, and the continuation. Women's rights are human rights and how we all have to have the conversation that happens. We've heard that phrase before, but there was a unifying theme that had to happen in that way. Uh, but then it was the conversation of engagement where you can't say, I'm going to have a movement. I'm just going to tell you what's best for you. People were asking for input. Walk me through. How do you want to be involved? How do you want to be a part of this? Talk me through your skills and your talents and your attributes that you can bring to the table so that we can then find a way to be more impactful uh, in that respective way. You think about the other recent examples, uh, rejecting of the repeal of Affordable Care Act. And when I talk about how it has to be the difference between a moment to a movement, when you're hearing conversations now coming back again around health care uh, and the repeal of it, that's a reminder of why you have to stay engaged and very clearly of how we're going to talk this through in, in terms of how you make this all happen. The blocking of the travel ban, the March for Science, the rejection of the gutting of the Office of Ethics. Uh, I'm giving these as examples to demonstrate we've only been in going through 2017 for a few months and we've already had five major moments that are a part of a movement of resistance. See where I'm going? Right. And the reason why you can be excited is because you don't forget on the previous victory that you had. You know, one thing we always try to tell people when you're trying to be engaged as organizers is how do you win hearts, minds and elections? Right. You know, and, and we're very real about that. We talk about that regularly. You know, you know, you, you couldn't be successful at the Malala front without saying we're going to have clear objectives. Right. You know, where are we trying to go? You know, it, it's not sufficient just to say we're going to march. Why are we marching? It's not sufficient to say we're going to protest. Why are we having a protest? It's not sufficient to say we're just going to stand outside here. Well, what are we doing it in, in this particular way? So when you think about how this gets engaged and plugged in, the Ethics Council, Ethics uh, uh, Panel is a perfect example itself. 
Uh, people across the country said, you know what we're going to do? We're going to pick up our phones. We're going to make phone calls. We're going to be mobilized. We're going to have targeted efforts. But that was successful because there was clear talking points and there was a clear phone number and there was a clear way to utilize that energy. I can tell you that when we passed health care in the White House, one of the reasons we were able to pass it is we were very clear with the explanations of things. Don't assume someone knows how to be a part of the resistance. You know, just because someone has the energy and the passion doesn't mean they don't have the instruction. Right. And so how do you walk them through? How do we do this? So